It all started about 10 years ago when I was diagnosed with cancer. They gave, they gave me about uh, six weeks to live if I didn't start treatment straight away. And this was the first time that I'd ever experienced what it was like to suffer. I'd never known suffering before. And it was this experience of suffering, and not only that, but coming out of my suffering that started inspiring me to help others. I put on 25 kilos while I had cancer and got all kinds of different sicknesses and that during that. So I was very blessed when a man who's a personal trainer helped me lose that 25 kilos and helped me get my health back. He helped me out of my suffering. And this is one of the greatest gifts we can give someone. And this is what he'd done for me. I was so inspired by this that I wanted to help others as well. So I became a personal trainer too. And I was on this journey, eight years as a personal trainer, that I started working on a cruise ship and I met a man who was very wise, a very wise Indian fella, old man. Basically, he told me that eating animals is bad karma. And that's the first time I ever cared about it, when it was about me. When this man told me that eating animals is bad karma, I said, yeah, there's no such thing as a healthy vegetarian though. And he said, well, I've been vegetarian for 20 years. And I said, shit, <laughs> all right, well, in that case, hmm, maybe it is possible, maybe you're a freak, but I'll look into it, I'll look into it, I'll see what it's about. I look into it and I start learning how much healthier it is to cut animal products from your diet, reducing your chances of heart disease, cancers, obesity, osteoporosis, diabetes, so many diseases. I decided, okay, I'm gonna try this for a week. I'll go vegetarian for one week, purely a selfish experiment to see how I feel, to see how much better I'm gonna feel. Three days in, instead of feeling like I couldn't get out of bed in the morning because I hadn't had any protein, I felt the opposite. I felt so much energy, I felt so strong, I felt like I needed to sleep less, I felt happier, I felt good. Three days in, before that, I was one of the biggest meat eaters you know. I was eating steak for breakfast. I was working on a cruise ship. It's buffets. I was taking advantage of that. I was piling my plate up with flesh of dead animals. And no wonder I felt better after three days. But it was a shock at the time because I never believed you could be healthy. So feeling good inspired me to look into it more. What's this? Why do I feel so great? There must be something to this. I look into it. I learn the health benefits, but I also see that so many people have another reason for becoming vegetarian. And that reason is because they don't want to contribute to harm to animals. Seeing everyone else's reasons for being vegetarian, I thought, okay, I'm gonna check this out again. What's happening in the slaughterhouse? What's happening before these animals become this neatly wrapped package on the supermarket shelf? What happens? I see it again for the second time. This time, I had a new perspective because I knew now that we can live and thrive without consuming animal products. So seeing this torture, this mutilation, this murder of these innocent beings, it led me to the question, if we aren't eating animals for health, and we don't need to kill and eat them to survive and be healthy, what are we doing this to them for? And I assumed there'd be a great answer. I thought there must be a good answer because everyone hates animal cruelty and everyone loves animals. So surely there's a fantastic answer why we do this. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I learned the best answers we've got, the best justifications we've got are taste, habit, tradition, and convenience. None of these reasons are a good enough justification to cause this unnecessary harm to animals. And I didn't care about animals, but I know injustice when I see it. I know unnecessary violence when I see it. I know oppression when I see it. And they are not the types of qualities I want to be. They are not the type of things living in alignment with the kind, peaceful, respectful person that I strive to be, and I always have. And I learned that, 
and I, had, I became vegetarian for a whole new reason. It was for animals. Soon later, I learned it's not just about flesh. It's about all the ways animals are being used in our society. All use is exploitation. All exploitation is a form of abuse, and all abuse is immoral. I learned it's about dairy, it's about eggs, it's about wool, silk, leather, products containing animal products, products that have been tested on animals, places that exploit animals for entertainment and for testing. It's about all the ways we use animals. This is when I learned about veganism. I heard a little bit about it before. My friend had gone vegan, who I didn't know very well, and someone came up to me one day and said, Grant has gone vegan. And I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and he said, I don't really know, but he doesn't sit on leather couches. <laughs> I was like, what? That is weird, man. He used to be normal in high school. <laughs> vegan. Always thought it was this extreme thing. Unnecessary. Why do we have to be vegan? Why? Because all the ways we use animals causes them harm. Because no living being deserves to be the slave or the property of someone else. I got to a point where that was the only thing that made sense. Since when was it extreme to not want to harm animals? When did that become extreme? What's extreme is saying we love animals and we're against animal cruelty while we pay people to mutilate and torture and slaughter animals. What is happening to animals right now is worse than your worst nightmare. What's happening to animals right now, you would not wish on your worst enemy. The worst offenders on this planet, pedophiles, sex offenders, murderers, do not get treated anywhere near as badly as the way we treat the most innocent and vulnerable beings on this planet. I want to remind you what is happening to them. They're getting their beaks cut off so they don't peck each other to death in their confined, crowded prisons. They're having their tails cut off so other animals don't eat them off them. They're having their teeth clipped so that they're out of stress, they don't eat into each other. They are being castrated at, when they're just babies with no anesthesia. Baby male chicks are being sent into a blender, blending them up alive. Baby boys in the dairy industry are being sent to the slaughterhouse to have their throats slit because they do not produce milk. Their mums are hooked up to painful milking machines and forcibly impregnated and their babies are taken from them and all of these animals end up at the same slaughterhouse, humanely slaughtered, which as we know means nothing for animals. Humane means to show compassion. There is never a compassionate way to exploit someone. There is never a compassionate way to kill someone who wants to live. We need to put ourselves in the animal's position. One of the best quotes I've ever heard that has fueled my activism is speak up for animals the way you would want to be spoken for if it was you in their situation. Veganism is what is already in our heart. If you agree, that causing unnecessary harm to animals is wrong, then by that belief, by your own belief, you are obligated to become vegan. Because anything less than being vegan is going in conflict with your core value of non-violence to animals. I'm not expecting you to do it overnight. You might, and a lot of people do. You might feel like you can't. I understand where you're coming from there. But that is your goal. And don't stop anywhere on that path of you getting there until you're there. It's incredibly easy, it's incredibly healthy. We are all, most people here are vegan. We're just normal people. We're not highly intellectual necessarily. When, who, who did someone laugh then? Someone's like, I am highly intellectual, thank you very much. <laughs> we are not necessarily a particular religion. We are not necessarily tofu lovers. Although I do love tofu now, before I hated it. But it's actually quite good if you haven't tried it. We are not necessarily caring about our health or the environment. We don't even necessarily have to love animals. I didn't. All you have to agree with is that it is wrong to cause unnecessary harm to animals.